Hi, thanks for joining us today. This is a continuation of the first video where we looked at this e-commerce dashboard template available in Data Studio and assess the layout. Now it's time to get busy and make the changes in Data Studio. So let's get started. We'll begin from your Data Studio homepage and this is datastudio.google.com. So this is what the homepage looks like. And what we'll do is click on template gallery, scroll down and click on see more. That opens up a new tab. And in the search bar, you can just type in e-commerce and that'll bring up the e-commerce store dashboard template that uses Google Analytics as the data source. So, of course, that means you need to have access to a Google Analytics account. If you don't have one, you can take a look at this video and set up a Google Analytics account and tracking. So this is the template that we reviewed in the previous video. What we'll do is click on Use Template and for the new data source, let's pick the, pick the data source that you want. So here we're going to, let's go ahead and create a new data source to take us through the steps. So we'll click on Google Analytics and we'll use the demo account, the universal analytics version, and the master view. We'll click on connect so that can bring the data source into this template and it gives us a list of all these fields if you if you just leave this alone that'll that'll just work fine and then click on copy report so once that loads we should see the data come in and fill in this template we'll start with the title and obviously it says Google Merchandise Store. So we know that this dashboard will cover something about the merchandise store, but what exactly is still a mystery. I mean, obviously we can look at the rest of the dashboard and tell what kind of information is in the dashboard, but we don't want to leave the crowd guessing. So since this title is actually an image, Let's go ahead and delete that so we can have more flexibility with the title. And then let's create a background for this header. So copy this gray background here, this gray rectangle, drag it up to the header and click on arrange, order, and send to the back so we can see our other, our other elements here. And Let's change the background to something similar to a Google blue maybe. Okay, that looks that looks good. And then click on the text icon in the menu here and create a text box where the original title used to be. Go over to the text properties on the right and let's try 28 pixels for the font size and select white for the color. Type in Google Merchandise Store E-Commerce Overview. Since we've given this a specific title and we're only pulling from one data source, we can delete that dropdown. This also helps to avoid any confusion with which dashboard you're looking at. I mean, if you have multiple e-stores on different web properties, you probably have different names for those stores and so it would make sense to name your dashboards accordingly. Right? Create separate dashboards for them and name them accordingly. Now we'll take a look at these drop down menus. And since these use the Google Analytics dimensions, it might be good to have Google Analytics opened up in another tab so you can cross-reference to see how many values each of these dimensions have. Device category will only have three values, desktop, mobile, and tablet. Country 
that could potentially have many values, especially if your company or your website has a global reach. Click on style and enable search box. So that will allow the user to search for specific countries. So the, the whole dashboard will filter all the data according to that selection. And then we'll select on source medium. That also has a potential to have many, many values for that. So we'll enable search box for that. And user type, there's only two possible values there, new and returning user. So we'll leave that alone. Now we come to the body of the dashboard. I'm actually going to delete the sessions chart because we can place that in a website performance dashboard. This dashboard will focus on e-commerce performance. Also, it's not conveyed explicitly, but Sessions does contribute to the e-commerce conversion rate. So I'm going to get rid of Sessions. Now we have our key performance indicators or KPIs over here on the right, but it would be better to place those at the top so it's the first thing that the audience reads since they are our KPIs. Then we'll have these three charts underneath. So instead of sessions, we're going to turn this chart, or sorry, this scorecard into transactions. So under metrics, Psych. click sessions click on sessions and look for transactions scroll down and for comparison date range choose previous year and click apply you should see a percentage that compares this value to the value for the previous period and will definitely take 3000 percent growth it makes sense to compared to previous year because many co companies need to take seasonality into account. There are other cases where you might want to co compare to the previous month as well. So let's move this over to the left side of the dashboard. For the second KPI, we'll turn that into revenue and add a comparison to the previous year. Ooh, almost 4,000% in growth. Okay, move that over and you can use the red lines to help you align each element. Let's turn this one into purchase conversion rate, which is called e-commerce conversion rate in Google Analytics. So choose that metric and then turn the date range, or sorry, the comparison date range to previous year. All right, do we have any bets on the increase for this one? How about 3,200%? All right, well, I was getting greedy. So move that over and we'll turn the last KPI into average order value AVG okay average order value and change the comparison date range to previous year and I'm guessing we'll have to bring this one down to earth so I'm gonna go with 20% okay not bad let's move the chart here and adjust this green background for the KPIs. So we'll shift the shape so that it spans across the entire, pretty much the entire width to cover all the KPIs. Okay, let's edit these charts. We'll keep the date dimension, but change the metric to transactions and update the comparison. You'll have to add a text area in order to add the title. 
We'll call this transactions over time. Switch the middle chart with the revenue chart. And call it revenue over time. Update the comparison. And since we can't use currency symbols or add them to the access labels, we'll add an access title. So click on style and scroll to left access, left Y axis. Click on show access title. Go back to the data panel and click on AUT next to the revenue metric and type in revenue followed by the currency symbol in parentheses. And change the last chart into or average order value and add the title and then update the comparison. Now let's adjust the width of these charts to 400 pixels each so that it can fit in this dashboard. As we do that, we can see that transactions and revenue were much better than last year and average order value was not only greater but more consistent than last year. Now we can turn our attention to these two data tables. We have product performance and then performance by traffic source. Since traffic source refers to acquisition and top of the funnel, I'm going to put that first. Product performance speaks to conversions, which is the end of the funnel, so it makes sense to move that after the table for traffic source. For the first table, I'm actually going to use the first metrics as we did for the KPIs. So change the first one under metrics to transactions. Change the second one to average order value and we'll move that to the bottom since it's the last one at the top of our dashboard. Let's go ahead and change the sort to revenue. You can also sort by transactions to easily see which channels produce the most conversions or transactions. For revenue, you'll notice that the numbers vary with significant digits. So click on style and scroll down to the metric section to find column two. Click on decimal precision and select two. For column three, change it from number to heat map. So we can see which sources have the highest conversion rates. I don't want the color too dark so the audience can still read the numbers. For average order value, set decimal precision to two and we can keep the heat map, heat map format so we can see what segment of customers spend the most. Let's give this table a title. Ooh, how about that alliteration? This could turn into a freestyle, but I would listen to it and just be embarrassed. Okay, so we'll call it performance by traffic source. For the second table, this metric product adds to cart shows zero because the tracking isn't set up. We see the same thing in Google Analytics. So we need to update or get rid of product adds to cart and as well as cart detail rate for the very same reason. You would have to set up the tracking for those metrics. If you want those metrics, work with your developers to track that. I'll change one of the metrics to quantity and swap 
the order with product revenue. Scroll down and sort by revenue. That's interesting. It looks like users don't actually review the product detail page, but they just purchase these products or add them to the cart from a browsing view. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If we go to Google Merchandise Store, and if we look at a line of products, what we'll see is if you click on a specific product, you can just add that product to the cart just from browsing these products right here. That's how they created the experience. So you don't have to go into the product detail page in order to add the product to the cart. Now go to style and find the metrics section again and change the decimal point or sorry the decimal precision for revenue. Let's use a heat map for quantity. So that's the third, third metric as well as a heat map for product revenue per purchase. Change the decimal precision for, for that metric. And then we'll add a title. Title the table and tell Timothy to talk to Tom. Okay, I'm just, I'm just getting distracted. We'll call it top products. For this device category chart, we can't add currency units, so we'll just add a title and call it device, or sorry, performance by device category. Let's take a look at this revenue city chart. If we click on style, we we'll see that there isn't a way to change the decimal precision for the percentages. But let's try changing the dimension from city to metro and change the number of slices to 10. That works a lot better because now other is only 28.8%. Okay, I'm going to make some final edits to the titles and adjust some of the spacing. Speaking of spacing, you could make this page uh, a little bit bigger by going to the page drop down in the menu and increase the dimensions of the page if you want to give yourself more space. Now we're done with editing the dashboard, so let's view our finished product. I just updated what was in the template, but you can change the dashboard to show other charts and data tables. So let me know what kind of changes you would make in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this helpful. I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. See you in the next video.